Hello, we have a fun question from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Benson Senator asks, could you please give details on what should be included in a proper reconsideration request? Fantastic question. We have done a video about this. I think uh, Brian White and uh, uh, web spam analyst uh, Rachel also had given their perspective. But I'll give you a very high level view and then maybe a few things to, to chew on and think about. At a very high level view, the goal of your reconsideration request is number one, to tell Google you've stopped whatever violations of the quality guidelines were happening. Paid links, cloaking, scraping, you know, doorways, whatever it was, you need to make a clear and compelling case that that has actually stopped. That behavior no longer uh, is going on and that you've cured that as much as possible. So if you were doing paid links, you've gotten as many of those links pulled down as you possibly can. The second aspect of a reconsideration request is to basically give us a good faith assurance that it won't happen again. You don't want to say, oh, well, this site looks like it's reformed, okay, we're going to lift this manual action, and then they immediately go back to spamming or doing their old tricks. So what you want to do is step into Google's shoes and say, okay, what would best convince Google that we've turned the corner and that this behavior has stopped and we've cured whatever was going on and, and it's not going to happen again. So great things to include, uh, things like details of the sorts of sites that you were contacting if you were uh, removing links, for example. Uh, if you used uh, an SEO and they really just shot you in the foot because they were doing all sorts of unethical things, uh, that's the sort of thing where I would uh, give us details about that. Tell us about the link network or the SEO or that sort of stuff. If it was someone in-house, what have you done to make sure that it doesn't happen again? Uh, I was talking to a large company uh, who had done a reconsideration request and they were talking about how they put a training program in place so that they, you know, future people would understand these were the violations of our quality guidelines whereas these behaviors were okay. Basically, the more stuff you can do to give that kind of clear, compelling evidence, the easier it is for Google to make an assessment. Um, ideally, it's, it's best if you include as much information as possible actually within the reconsideration request. Um, we tend to be a little bit leery of if you're inserting hyperlinks that go off to random places. If we, do, if we can't know where they're going to go, then we have to think about is someone going to try to give us malware or something like that. Uh, you can include links to a Google Doc or a Google Spreadsheet if you want to show sites that you've contacted because it is possible for us to view those sorts of docs without worrying about you know what sort of things might be included or, or revealing the identity of the, the person who is uh, looking at the reconsideration request. But it's, you know, just like any time when you're trying to convince somebody, you want to make sure that you show that you have taken a lot of effort, uh, that you ha have tried to clean things up, and that you, you know, basically won't happen again. And the, the more we can suss out and try to assess whether you've, you're now of that mindset, we're not just going to try to do another fly-by-night trick or, or, you know, whether things will lapse again, the easier it is for Google to say, okay, it looks like things are in pretty good shape, so let's go ahead and grant that reconsideration request.